So polar integration isn't just the case of integrating your curve, integrating your equation between limits and stuff. Um, there is a mm -hmm. formula for this, which is this, which is on your formula sheet. So it turns out if you want to find an area for a polar graph, you use that formula. It's always an area between two half lines. So your normal integration that you do um, is area between the graph and the x-axis. No longer like that for um, polar coordinates. So it's kind of like it's like it, it well it is like a sector of a circle. Okay, so this formula should look similar. Familiar to you, it looks like a half r squared theta, which you know is the formula for a sector of a circle. And that's where it comes from. So, you know, we did for integration, we split up into a load of little rectangles and we do the sum of those rectangles and stuff. It gives you normal integration. For polar integration, instead of splitting them up into rectangles, you split them up into a bunch of little sectors. And then you take, so with your angle theta in there, you take the limit as theta tends to zero and it gives you that for that formula for working out the area of the um, polar curve. OK, so it's a little bit weird and it will take some getting used to, but that's um, the formula that you use rather than just integrating the curve that you've got, the, the equation. That you've got. Mm -hmm. I think the more examples I can do with this, kind of the better. Has helped you understand it. So we'll do a little bit today. And we'll do some more on it next week. This example one, first off, is actually asking us to sketch two cos, um, r equals two cos theta for theta is between zero and pi over two. Um, so this is between zero and pi over two. That's a semicircle like that. Um, starting at two over here. By the way, I looked up a past exam question on sketching um, polars. What they want you to mark on is they want you to mark on the initial line. They want you to mark on the pole which is the origin, and they like you to mark on where your graph crosses the initial line, so it's a good habit to get into. It then says find the area bounded by r equals 2 cos theta, which is this, and the half lines theta equals pi over 12, which is something like this. And theta equals pi over four. Okay. So it's this area of the curve in there that I'm working at. Okay, so you're working out the area, you start off at the line, the half line pi over 12, and you kind of rotate it around until it gets to pi over four, and it's that area that it's covered in between there, rather than it being the area between your curve and the initial line anymore, it's the area between those half lines that you're using for limits. Okay. So the integration, the area that we're going to do is a half r squared theta, or half times the integral of mm -hmm. r squared d theta. And our limits are going to be pi over 12 for our lower limit and pi over 4 for our upper limit. Our equation is r equals 2 cos theta, so if we square that, we can get r squared. I'm going to stick that in. We get a half integral between pi over 12 and pi over 4 of this squared d theta. It's then just a case of working this out. So obviously 2 cos theta squared is 4 cos squared theta. <laughs> and as a bit of the self-study is practicing doing integrals like this. Um, so I can pull the far up to the front and times it by the half to give me two. Integrating cos squared, I have to use a double angle formula for cos. So I'm going to use the cos two theta is two cos squared theta minus one. Which you can rearrange to make cos squared the subject. If you add the one and divide by two. I can swap that into my integral. 
So my integral is a thick and the far to the front times it by a half, which is between two. Integrating cos squared, I'm going to rewrite it as a half cos two theta plus a half. In fact, I can factorize a half out and times it by that two and it just disappears. <clears throat> Cos two theta plus five. And then it's a case of integrating this. Integrating cos you know goes to sine. Don't forget to divide by the two. Do that, Lucy. I'll post the homework on two. And your limits pi over four and twelve. And then we've just got to substitute both. So half sine. 2 times pi over 4 plus pi over 4 minus a half sine 2 times pi over 12 plus pi over 12 is plus 2. And let's work this out. Half sine pi over 2. I don't think we're going to be No, I'm not going to take this line to my calculator. I'm going to work them out a bit at a time because I'm going to want an exact value. So I get sine pi over 2. Pi over 2 is 1. It's a half plus pi over 4. 2 times pi over 12 is pi over 6. Sine pi over 6, you can work out in your calculator. You get half and a minus pi over 12. Now, if I work this out exactly, so half minus a quarter gives me a quarter. Pi over 4 minus pi over 12, that gives me pi over 6, I think. So example two says find the area enclosed by one loop of the curve with polar equation r equals a sine four feet. Um, you could do a little sketch in your calculator to see what what's going to happen with this, but it's going to be one of these loopy ones like petal shape thingies. Um, but we only need the first loop. The first thing we're going to do it says is find the values of theta which will give the beginning and end of the loop by solving r equals theta. Remember r equals theta gives you the tangents at the pole. And we'll look in a little bit more detail about what this means. Yeah. So the first thing we're going to do is solve r equals zero. So that's a sine four theta zero. The a obviously doesn't matter. And you can inverse sine this to get four theta is zero for your first solution. We're going to get a second one just because we're going for the fir first loop. So the second time, theta, sorry, sine is at zero in the 180. I guess it should, we should be doing it in radius, not radius. Should be at pi. And I'm going to divide three by four. So my first two tangents at the pole are at zero and pi over four. Okay. So the line theta equals zero is the initial line. This one here. Thank you. Line theta equals pi over two. So pi over four. It's here. So my initial loop goes like this. And these are what the tangents of the pole are. These are tangents to the curve that go through the origin. Just touch the curve here. So this is what what's happened. We've put our theta values in. We've tracked this curve out, got to the maximum value up here, um, which will be at a, and it's gone down here. But we're not really interested in that maximum value. All we're interested in are those tangents, because those are our limits that we're going to use for our integration. Okay. So integrating as this angle goes through here, and adding up all these little sectors and getting this into this area. Okay. So the integral we're going to do. Is a half times the integral of r squared theta, and we're going to go between the limits of zero and pi over four. So those those tangents, those half lines, are our limits we're putting in. Okay. It's a really important idea that you're no longer finding the area between your curve and the x-axis. 
finding the area between half lines. All we had is a sine theta, so if we substitute that in, this is a half times the integral of a sine 40 meters squared. Theta theta. I'm going to expand this out, so I'll get a squared sine squared for theta. I'm going to take the a squared out to the front, which I'm allowed to do because it's just a constant. And I've got sine squared for theta. And it's now a case of just doing this integration. Um, there's a bit of practice on this on the self-study, which you've done before this lesson. So integrating sine squared or cos squared, we're going to use a double angle formula for cos. It's always cos. So this time I want uh, cos 2a equals 1 to minus 2 sine squared a. Make sure you know those from single maths. And I'm going to rearrange this to make sine squared the subject, and I can swap in 4 theta instead of a. So I get sine squared 4 theta, a half, and some half. Cos 8 theta in this case. So I've taken the 2 sine squared across and minus the cos 2a across, and then divided by 2. And I've put in the 4 theta instead of This integration now. So I've got a squared over 2, square between 0 and pi over 4, of a half minus a half cos 8 theta, which we can now integrate. So a half integrates to a half theta. Uh, cos integrates to sine. And don't forget to divide through by the 8. And it's 1 over 16 sine 8. Sub your limits in. Don't assume that you get 0 when you sub 0 in, although in this case you do get 0 because sine of 0 is 0. Okay, a squared over 2 and a half times pi over 4. And it's 1 over 16 sine. Eight times five of four. Minus zero, because it will get zero into that end. Uh, eight times five of four is two pi. Sine of two pi is also zero. It's a bit zero. So you just get um, a squared pi over 16 as your exact. Um, there's an important little box down here. Um, which is talking about area loops and stuff like that. Um, it's almost always easier to just do a single loop like we've just done than trying to do the whole area and dividing by how many loops you've got or anything like that. But loops are symmetrical, so they'll all have the same area. So if you wanted to find the area of two loops, you could just find one and double it. You've got to be really careful that you don't include any um, uh, parts of the graph that have a negative R value, otherwise it's going to end up going wrong. Um, just like how if you include like, like a positive, a bit above the axis and a bit below the axis in normal integration, it kind of cancels out. Similar sorts of things are going to happen here if you're including negative R values. So just try and you just want to pick one part of the graph basically. And, and This one now has asked us to find the area enclosed by the cardioid with the equation r equals a1 plus cos. This is one of these of shapes. Now, an important thing to realize here that obviously we just mentioned areas below the x axis in normal integration end up being negative. They don't end up being negative in a polar integration. So, this area below the initial line is not negative, it's not really below. It's just Further round the axis. There's no such things below. I guess the below equivalent would be negative r values now, but we don't plot that. Okay. Um, so we're going to do the same thing. This time we're going to do this between um, 0 and 2 pi. So it's kind of like we start on this line here and then rotate it around, which will include all of this area, all of this area in here, and that'll be the top half. What you can do is you could do the area between 0 and pi and double it because it is again. Symmetrical, be absolutely fine. Um, either answer should be fine. So we'll do zero and two pi, but you could do zero and pi. Uh, 
the area again is a half R squared defeat for polar. I'm going to do 0 to 2 pi, but you could equally do 0 to pi and tell me right. So, yeah. And 0 to pi, which is half the half. Yeah. Yeah, because when doubling it, will cancel out with half. Yeah. Um, we've got R is A1 plus cos theta. Squared. And again, I'm going to square the A and take it out to the front. Just a constant. And then we're going to expand this bracket, this one plus cos theta squared. So we get one plus two cos theta plus cos squared. We know how to integrate one. We know how to integrate cos theta. Cos squared theta requires us to use a double angle formula to integrate it. So let's put that in. I'm going to use the cos 2 theta is 2 cos squared theta minus 1. And again, rearrange this to make cos squared the subject. Take the 1 across and divide through by 2. So we're going to integrate in a squared over 2, integral between 2 minus 0. I've got 1 um, plus 2 cos theta plus a half cos two theta plus a half, and that one and a half, you can combine together to give you three over two. Two cos theta plus a half cos two theta. And we're now in a position to integrate this. So 3 over 2 integrates 3 over 2 theta. Cos integrates to sine. And again, uh, cos 2 theta integrates to sine 2 theta, and don't forget to divide through by the 2. So I get water sine. Take the limit in. So I put in 2 pi in, equally put pi in. So a squared over 2. 2 over 2, 2 pi, plus 2 sine 2 pi, which is 0, plus a quarter sine 4 pi, which is also 0. And if I sub 0 in, all of that ends up being 0. Uh, so you just get this first bit, which gives you 3a squared pi over 2. I'll do right with this idea of polar integration. So this one, I think is more like what you might get in a um, real example. But this says the curve C, the curve bit, has equation r equals 2 plus cos theta. And it says we're just going between 0 and pi over 2. So just this first quadrant. Uh, it tells us the coordinates of a. We don't need to find that out. So that's 5 over 2 over 3. So this angle here is pi over 3. And this distance here is 5 over 2. The point n lies on the initial line, and a n is perpendicular to the initial line. That's the right angle in there. And it says the finite region R is bounded by the curve C, the initial line, and the line A M. So it's this kind of kind of looks like a quarter of a circle, but it is. But that's what it wants us to find the exact area of. So we're going to have to do a couple of areas here and take one away from the other one. It's, we can't just do this in a single thing. What I'm going to do first is find this entire area here from O, A, around T, and back to O. So I'm going to find all of this area in here. Because that area is the integral of the curve between 0 and pi over 3. So between these two half lines in there. Okay, so if I'm moving my angles around, this is the area that's enclosed by the curve. 
So to find this, this is a half times the integral of r squared d theta between zero and pi over three. Um, r is two plus cos theta, so let's stick that in. Zero. And again, to integrate this, we're going to do exactly the same as we did in the previous session. We're going to square it. Expand it out. If it does, not Integral was doing zero and pi over three. Expand this out between four plus four cos theta uh, plus cos squared theta. Just like before, we're going to use that cos two theta is two cos squared theta minus one. And if I rearrange to it, cos squared the subject to get a half cos two p minus one, just like we've done in last week. Integral that we're doing then, if you put all this together, so I've got four already in there. I'm adding in a half from my cos squared theta to get four plus a half, so I get nine over two or four point five. So I'm now I've got the four cos theta. And I've also got the half cos two theta. And if I do this integration, sine over two theta cos integrates the sine. Don't forget to divide through by the two from the cos two theta. your limits in nine over two times pi over three cos sine pi over three cos sine two pi over three and again subbing zero in does just give you zero now sine pi over three and sine two pi over three are root three over two So nine over six, three pi over two. Sorry for this. Starting out that bit there, cancel the three, you get three pi over two. Then, um, like I said, pi over, sine pi over three is root three over two. So is sine two pi over three. And you can put those together. So you've got two from the first one, you've got an eight from the first one. Two and an eight, that's seventeen over eight. And I'm going to times two by this half as well. I get three pi over four from the first one. And the second one, combining those root roots together, I get seventeen over sixteen root. Feels like it should be finished there, but. Oh. That's just the whole area of the um, curved bit. Yeah, that shaded in green. We need to work out the bits that shaded in grey. So we're going to work out the area of that triangle and take that one. That's it. Okay. <coughs> so area of the triangle. Um, we've got the um, hypotenuse of the triangle, we've got the angle that it makes. So you can work out the opposite and adjacent side and use the half base times height, or you can just work out the adjacent side and use half A, B, C. Um, so let's go for the adjacent side. So um, our X coordinate here is the adjacent side. So um, our X coordinate is 5 over 2 cos 5 over 3. Give you 5 over 4. Our opposite sides, we call them x and y, so we've got r cos theta and r sine theta, basically for those coordinates. And then I can do the area of this triangle is a half times the base times the height. Jeez. 25 over 32. Root 3.
finally take them away from each other. So the total area is three quarts pipe. 17 over 16 roots. That's the whole area. Take away the area of the triangle. Three quarters pi minus nine over thirty two plus nine over thirty two. Root three. Lovely. Yeah. 